Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. I challenge you to watch this whole video without yawning. Today we're going to use a Wemos D1 Mini ESP8266 board and a 16x2 LCD with I2C backpack to display our YouTube channel statistics that is provided by the YouTube API version 3 on Google Cloud Resource Manager every 3 minutes or whatever time we set it to gather information. I actually used this one on my 100 sub special video. Click here to check it out. Also, it turns out that we are one of the top 5% Arduino contributors on Hackster.io. Now, there are tons of guides for this one, so I figured I would just gather all of the things needed to do it and compress them into one video. From setting up the ESP8266 boards to installing the YouTube API and Arduino JSON libraries on the Arduino IDE and setting up YouTube API version 3 on Google Cloud Resource Manager to get our API key. All of the necessary links will be available on the description down below. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go! First thing we need to do is to download the ESP8266 boards using this GitHub link. This one is created by Carl JDP. Thank you, sir. Copy this link right here. Then, let's open our Arduino IDE. Click File, Preferences, then paste the link onto the Additional Board Manager box. There it is. Click OK, close it, then open it again. Then click on Tools, Board, then Boards Manager. Let's wait for it to load. OK, now search for ESP8266. There it is. Now, this is vital. For the libraries to be able to work properly, do not install the beta versions. Let's install the latest stable version which is version 2.4.2. Wait for it to finish downloading and there you go. Click close. Now, to install the YouTube API and Arduino JSON libraries, let's download them first. Again, all necessary links will be in the description down below. Don't worry, I will add labels to it so it won't be confusing. Let's download the YouTube API library. This one is created by Witness Me Now. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's also copy and paste this link on our browser. This is important because we can use this to see if our API key and user ID is correct and working. Now, let's download the Arduino JSON library by clicking this link or the one provided in the description below. Here it is. This one is created by B. Blanchon. Thank you, sir. After downloading, let's go to our downloads folder and copy and paste the zip files into our Arduino libraries, then extract both of the zip files there. After that, let's open up the IDE again and check to see if we have the non beta versions installed. Click on Tools, Manage Libraries, then search for YouTube API Library. There it is, we have the correct version. Now for the Arduino JSON. Okay, version 5.13.4 is installed. And that's it. Now that all the setup process is done, let's make our YouTube API key. Log in or create an account if you haven't done it yet. Again, all the necessary links will be on the description down below and on my Arduino Project Hub profile. Now, click on Create Project. Key in your desired project name. Then, click on the Create button. Wait for the project notification to finish loading. Then, click this button right here. Now, click on APIs and Services. Click on Dashboard. Select your project if you haven't done it yet. Then, click Open. After that, click on Enable APIs and Services. Then, search for YouTube Data API V3. Then, click Enable. As you can see here, our project is already enabled. After that, click on Create Credentials. Then, click on the drop-down menu, choose YouTube API v3, click the other drop-down menu below it, and select Web Server. Then, click on Public Data. Then, click on What Credentials Do I Need? It will take us to our API key. Copy and paste your API key onto a notepad. Then, go back to the YouTube API GitHub link from before. Copy and paste this link onto the notepad too. Then, go to your YouTube channel or other people's channel and get their YouTube channel ID. Mine is this one. Copy and paste it onto the notepad also. 
Okay, now copy and paste your YouTube channel ID here, right in the middle of the ID equals an ampersand key. Then your API key here. Then copy and paste the new link onto your browser to check and see if everything is in order. There it is. View count, commit count, sub count, and video count. Okay, everything is in order. Now we need to edit the code from the YouTube API statistics example, but before that, let's set up our device first. So, here are the things that we need. A Wemos ESP A266 D1 Mini or compatible board, some female pin headers, a 16x2 LCD with I2C backpack, a couple of male to female jumper cables, and since I don't have a 3D printer, I will be using an aftermarket acrylic LCD display case. Before we start with the programming, let's solder the female pin headers onto the D1 mini board first. I will be using a breadboard with some male headers to hold the D1 mini board while soldering. Just like that. Now for the soldering. After soldering, let's upload some test or example codes to see if our board is working properly. Just open up the IDE, double check if you have set it to the correct board, click on Tools, then Board. After checking, click on File, Examples, ESP8266, then click on Blink. This will make the built-in LED on our board blink on and off. Also, make sure that our board is connected to the computer. Hey, come back here, you Okay, now, click on Tools again, then click on Port and choose the correct port of our board. For me, it's COM11. Then, click Upload. When you encounter this error, just click on Upload again, then see if it would work. That fixed my problem. Alright, as you can see here, the board's LED is blinking just as intended. Now, let's try another sample code. Click on File, Examples, ESP8266, and let's try Sigma Delta Demo. This code will cycle some effects on our LED like blinking and breathing or frequency mode. And there you go. Now let's test some codes for our LCD. Open up your browser and go to circuito.io. Click Go to App. Then, search for LCD and pick the right kind of LCD you will be using. Drag it to the center. Don't worry about the Arduino, I will just use this for testing. Then, click on Project Guide and click Go to Wire. Okay, here is the Arduino and here is the LCD. Here we will see the wiring part and where we should connect the LCD on our D1 mini board. The black wire is going to be the ground or GND. The white wire is going to be the positive or VCC, and the other two is for SEL and SDA. SEL is the purplish one and the SDA is the gray wire. So GND or ground is the ground. SEL is to A5, SDA is to A4, and VCC is to 5V or 5 volts. The diagram for the D1 mini board will also be provided at the link on the description down below. Okay, so now that we have connected it to our board, click on code and then download code. Then go to the download folder, extract the zip file, open the firmware folder, then click on firmware.ino. There it is, this is the code that we need. Then connect the MCU to the computer. Then, upload the code. After uploading, open up Serial Monitor. Click on Tools, then Serial Monitor. It says LCD not found. Hmm, could it be that my LCD is broken or there is something wrong with the code? Now, if you encounter this issue, what you can do is follow this instruction right here. Try the given addresses by uncommenting or commenting the following rows until the LCD works follow the Serial Monitor prints. Okay, so I'm going to comment this one and uncomment this one. Now, to see if we have the correct LCD address, 
click on File, Examples, Arduino Learning Board, then click ALB I2C Scan. As the title of the sample code says, this will scan if there are any I2C backpacks connected to our Arduino and tell us what its LCD address is. Now, it says here that the address of our LCD is 0x27. And it says that it has found one device, which means the issue is not with the LCD itself. Okay, now close it and change the LCD address in our code. Then, click on upload again. And there you go. Alrighty then, now we have to test the sample code from the YouTube API library. Open the IDE, click on Tools, Board, and the Wemos D1R1. Then click on File, Examples, YouTube API, ESPA266, and Channel Statistics. Okay, type your Wi-Fi SSID or the name of your Wi-Fi here, your network key or Wi-Fi password here, then copy and paste your API key from Google here, and the channel ID that you want to use right here. Then make sure that your D1 mini board is connected. Click on Serial Monitor, select the correct port, set the board rate on the Serial Monitor to 115,200, click on Verify or Compile, Then, upload your code. Okay, upload is done. Wi-Fi is connected. There's my IP address during the recording of the video. And wait for about a minute to see the channel statistics. Because the code is set to request for it every minute by default. We can change it though. There it is. Sub count is 95. Views is 33,530. Code is working. We just need to change the serial to LCD I2C. So now we will edit the code to our preference and to display the statistics to our LCD. Just like before, open the IDE, click on File, Examples, YouTube API, ESPA266 and then Channel Statistics. Enter your data, then copy and paste the code onto a new sketch so that if you ever make any errors or if we accidentally save it during the coding process, the raw and unedited sketch is still safe. Okay, then save the file. Copy and paste these things to the folder where the saved file is. These are from the code that we got from Sirkito. Close and reopen the sketch. Then also open the sketch from Sirkito. Now, we need to copy some codes from the Sirkito file to our saved sketch. Copy these, the address, these things, and this one here. Then, change the serial codes to LCD I2C, just like this. Now, I'm going to try and edit it so that the statistics will be shown on both the serial monitor and the LCD. You can try this method if you want. And I'm going to remove the comment count part, since I don't think it will fit the LCD. Okay, let's verify and see if there is something wrong with the code. Then, click on save if all is good. Okay, now we need to connect the D1 Mini to the LCD. Let's go to the Wemos wiki and find out where we can connect it. Again, the diagram of the D1 Mini board and all the necessary stuff needed will be on the description down below. Now, scroll down until you see pin. This one. Pin. It says pin. Okay, it says here that the SEL and SDA can be connected to D1 and D2. So, let's connect the black or ground wire to the GND or ground. The white or VCC 1 to 5 volts. And the... Uh, SDA or the gray wire to D1 and the SEL or violet wire is going to D2. There you go, just like that. Now, let's try the code. Let's minimize this. Connect the D1 mini to the computer. Open tools again. Serial monitor. Then, let's upload the code. So, if there are no text showing on the LCD, Let's adjust the potentiometer at the back. 
And if that method does not work, double check the code. See here I forgot to copy the initialization code of the LCD. Paste that under the void setup, then hit upload again. If this type of error shows up, just hit upload again and let's see what will happen. It says here that the LCD is not found. So let's try and reconnect it and also try to switch the wire that is connected to D1 and D2. Because at this point, that's the only thing we can do I think. There you go. And uh, click on upload again. And finally, we made it work. There it is. The text is finally showing up. What we need to do next is try to clean up how the text is being displayed on the LCD. So now that we know that the data is showing up on the LCD, we don't need it to show up on the serial monitor anymore. So we can remove these codes. Okay, compiling sketch. Here we go. Let's see. What? Okay, let's re-upload the code. Connecting Wi-Fi. IP address. Well, it's not quite right yet. So we need to edit it more. So here is the code finally cleaned up. There you go. Properly edited for the LCD. Now we just need to connect the D1 mini board and take a look at it. Connecting to Hidden Hacks' Wi Fi network. Wi Fi connected. IP address. As you can see here, I have added a text that shows up while the D1 mini board is connecting to Google Cloud's resource manager to fetch the data. Let's wait for about a minute to see the channel statistics. And there you go. Now, I'm going to visit my channel and subscribe to it using my other account just to see if it will show the updated subscriber count. Subscription added. Let's wait for another minute and see if it will change. There you go. Now, I'm going to unsubscribe and see if it will update again. And back to 96 subs. Perfect. After that, we need to set up our acrylic display case. Okay, let's get our screwdriver. Remember to remove the protective sheet of the acrylic after and not before installing it to prevent a lot of scratches. Just like that. Then install the LCD using the screws that are provided. Remember to also not over tighten it or it will crack the acrylic. Clean up some dust a bit. Now, let's attach the D1 mini board to the acrylic too, so that it won't look messy. Well, it turns out that using a double-sided tape to attach the D1 mini board was a bad idea. So now, I'm going to use my glue gun instead. And now, for a demo. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you did too. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you like to see more projects in the future. Click the like button if you like the video and dislike it if you did not find this tutorial informative enough. Also, post a comment down below, criticisms, questions, or whatever. I like reading your feedback. Oh, right. This is what the Google Cloud Resource Manager looks like after about 45 plus minutes of continuous data fetching or requests every 3 minutes. And for one last look, thanks for watching and see you again next week.